What's up? It's Mark Latiri here. Super stoked to be participating in this year's True Fire and PRS road trip. We got our PRS Fiore electric guitar, my signature model that I put out with PRS a couple months ago. We're going to be using that on some jams, and we're going to be also using this PRS SE277 baritone on a tune. And uh, I got my pedal board here on the floor, and it's going into a Kemper, and we're going to do the uh, good old guitar karaoke thing. Hope you enjoy it. First tune uh, is from a record of mine from 2019. The record's called Things of That Nature, and this song is called Huh. <laughs>
So what was some of the best advice I've been given by an older musician? Well, it's great advice, but it wasn't given by a musician. It was actually given by a track coach of mine. And he said, fake it till you make it. And I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, but I took it to heart. I took it to mean, don't ever say no. Just go in to any situation uh, and do your best. You know, take risks. You might fall on your face, but you'll probably learn something really good about yourself along the way. And you just keep accepting opportunities and figuring it out and getting really good at those opportunities by learning. And eventually you'll start succeeding in the way you want to succeed. Uh, so I took it to, to mean, you know, take, take risks. And don't be afraid to just kind of put yourself out there and see what happens. Fake it till you make it. Keep trying. You'll figure out a way to be convincing. And then you'll finally actually learn how to do it the right way, you know. So that's my advice. Fake it till you make it. So this next tune uh, is from 2016. That's when the record was out. The record's called Spark and Echo. And this song is called Red Racer. <laughs> Thank you. 
was one of my most memorable live gigs? Well, probably in, in recent memory, it was doing the Snarky Puppy live recording at Royal Albert Hall in London. We did that in the fall of 2019. Really incredible record. Obviously just a, a legendary venue. I mean, it's, it's unexplainable to stand on the same stage as Jeff Beck and Jimi Hendrix and, and Eric Clapton and all these amazing players that had come, come before us. But really, I think what was so special is just getting out there with my band, my brothers, and just playing some tunes for a whole bunch of people that were really excited to be there and who helped us get there. Uh, it was kind of this big culmination of a lot of hard work that we'd done over, gosh, more than a decade, actually. So it was really nice to see it all come to fruition at such a lovely venue. So yeah, if you want to hear the music, you can go get the album, Snarky Puppy, live at the Royal Albert Hall. All right, so this next little tune is just kind of an improv jam that I'm going to do with a loop pedal. And uh, here's that SE277 baritone that I was talking about. If you like baritone stuff, I got a record called Deep the Baritone Sessions. There's two volumes. There's volume one and volume two. And it has a lot of baritone and a lot of funk and rock and cool stuff. So here's a little baritone jam for you. <laughs> exercise two different parts of my brain that I like to use. So I guess I'll just say both, which I know is sort of a cop-out answer, but whatever. I like the studio because I can kind of put on my producer hat and work on honing in tones and sounds and parts and getting everything nice and arranged and organized for the song or for the album, for the artist, you know, or even for myself. Uh, and it's also fun to experiment with sounds in the studio as well and just kind of paint these, these pictures and formulate formulas for all the little sections that you're doing and kind of piece things together into this one great experience. But what I like about live is the, the, uh, the, the unknown, the, the chance, the, 
potential for disaster, <laughs> so to speak. I love that element of live performance. I think when you get into a situation where you are uh, pushed to kind of come up with the cool things on the spot, really amazing stuff can happen when you're interacting with musicians live in front of an audience at high volume. I think that's just such a beautiful experience, and I really, really like doing it. So this next joint uh, is from my first record from 2011. The record's called Nose. K-N-O-W-S. It's got a big picture of my nose on the front, so there you go. Puns. And the song is called Slide Rule. It's going to use my Fiore for that one, too.
I would give to an intermediate player to make sure they didn't skip over as they are learning. I would say don't neglect working on your rhythm guitar chops because great rhythm guitar playing will actually make you a better soloist. Uh, it'll make you a better improv player. It'll just make you better. So work on your rhythm. doesn't really matter what style you play. In fact, the more styles that are interesting to you, uh, the better your rhythm will be because it's always kind of cool to maybe challenge yourself in a style or rhythm that you're not familiar with, uh, just to sort of, it's almost like weight training, you know. Uh, so work on your rhythm guitar. Frankly, if you're doing music for a living, uh, or even if you're not, uh, most of the time you're going to be playing rhythm guitar, <laughs> so you might as well uh, get really, really schooled on it and, and build up that part of your plan. So don't forget to practice your rhythm guitar. Let's see, what is my best tip on getting a great tone? Well, I really don't know, but I'll tell you, uh, don't hide behind too much reverb and delay, maybe, which is something I tell myself a lot. Now, of course, that might be part of your sound, in which case, spread it on. Uh, but for me, uh, I like to kind of dial that stuff back so I can try to see how good my time feel is. Because sometimes if you've got a lot of the verb and sort of ambient stuff, it'll cloud up just exactly where you're sitting in the pocket. So get really good. I know I was just talking about rhythm guitar. So get really good at sitting in the pocket and then start adding the ambience, the time stuff time time delay you know what I'm trying to say um, another thing I'm working on is maybe not using too much gain I know sometimes for at least what I do uh, the sound is a little bit bigger if, it, if there's not so much gain because sometimes you put a lot of gain and things start to sound compressed a little bit small in the mix so that's something I'm working on because I like having a lot of gain because it helps me fly around the fretboard a little bit more as maybe you saw I was probably using way too much gain in these tunes but Anyway, um, yeah, try doing that. Again, it'll help with your time feel, too, because it's a little bit more revealing, right? You're the sort of less that you're hiding behind. But again, tone is one of those subjective things, so as long as it's, as long as you're accomplishing the sound that you hear in your head, I think you're on the right track. All right, well, thanks so very much for watching, everybody. I'm Mark Letiri. This has been my portion of the True Fire and PRS Road Trip video series. Uh, if you want to hear more of my stuff, you can just... Get online, I'm on all the social medias, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and all that. Like I said, I got a new record out called Deep, the Baritone Sessions Volume 2. So if you dug that little baritone jam, check out that record. It's like baritone jam times a thousand. So, thanks for having me. Thank you, PRS. Thank you, True Fire. Thank you all for watching. Peace.